we're here to talk about 10 things you need to know about NEO. Starting off at number 10, we have video options. NEO offers a few different ways to play the game, and it really helps to tailor it to how you want the game to look and play. The regular PlayStation 4 has three different modes, and then the PlayStation 4 Pro has four different ones. On PS4, there's movie mode, which focuses on higher quality graphics, locked in at 30 frames per second, action mode that focuses more on giving a stable frame rate at 60 frames per second, and then movie mode with variable frame rate, which is a mix of the two. The PS4 Pro has four different ones, two of them which only work with a 4K display. There's movie mode, which offers a stable 1920 by 1080 resolution with high quality anti-aliasing at 30 frames per second. Action mode that offers 1920 by 1080 resolution with 60 frames per second. And then there are the two modes that work with a 4K display. Movie mode, which offers a 3840 by 2160 resolution at 30 frames per second. And then action mode that gives you 1920 by 1080 resolution with locked in 60 frames per second. Rise of the Tomb Raider had different modes like this and there was a noticeable difference. And being able to play that game locked in at 60 frames per second was awesome. Up next on number 9 we have the game's length. According to a head developer of Neo, it'll take around 70 hours to complete this game. Now in the past there have been games that claimed to have a ton of gameplay time but was truthfully about half or so about what was actually stated. So even if this game does get us 35 to 40 hours, that's still not bad at all. The game supposedly has 20 main missions and 100 side missions, and that's that's a good amount of content, that's a good amount of missions. And there are people who were able to blast through some of those missions in the beta and the alpha within 15 or 20 minutes, but it seems like that's a small group of people, and for most players it is taking a lot longer than that. It's also unclear right now if there's any end game content or a new game plus mode of any kind. I mean most Dark Souls players will say that Dark Souls doesn't actually start for you until you beat it that first time and start new game plus, and seeing that Neo is very similar to those series of games, it might be the same case here if there's a new game plus, and that right there doubles your playtime. But even without any of that, it's, it seems like there's still a good amount of game here to play. And up next, on number 8, we have the difficulty. This game isn't going to be for anyone who's easily annoyed or discouraged from games. It's like Dark Souls levels of hard. I'm going to make that comparison a lot in this video because Dark Souls is the obvious influence for this game. Koei Tecmo has even come out and admitted to that. One of the developers stated, and I quote, we consciously avoided making the game easy. So they're out to make a hard game. They want this game to be challenging. And it's going to work just like Dark Souls does where every battle is like a game of chess and you really have to time your attacks and learn the enemy's attacks and movements and you really just have to time everything super perfectly and one false move could cost you everything. There also aren't any other difficulties, so everyone will be playing the same exact game. Everyone will have the same experience and be playing on the same difficulty. So hopefully you don't have too hard of a time with a game like this, because if you do, there's no way to drop the difficulty, and at that point you really just have to power through and hope that you make it. So if you aren't a fan of any of the Souls games or Bloodborne, this might not be the best game for you to check out, because you're already going into it knowing that you kind of don't like it. And up next, number seven, we have Japanese folklore. Neo makes use of a ton of Japanese folklore in this game. For example, most of the enemies you fight in the game are actually based off yokai. And yokai are demon or ghost or just supernatural monsters that pop up in different Japanese folklore. For example, one of the enemies in the game is based off the idea that all inanimate objects have souls and when those objects are neglected or go unused, they can become an angry ghost. And the idea behind this is to make sure that you treat all of your things well and with respect and you're just grateful for what you have. And this is really cool, I love stuff like this. Part of what made God of War so cool was the mythology behind it. Seeing these different gods and monsters that I've always read about and had a prior knowledge of pop up in the game. And while my knowledge of Japanese folklore isn't too good, I do know a little bit and it'll be really cool if I can pick out things in Neo. And up next, number six, we have the Mimic. Once again, I'm going to reference Dark Souls. Dark Souls has these mimic chests. Other games do too, but Neo also has them. But they're pretty different than the ones in Dark Souls. In Dark Souls, they're just bad chests. Like, they're evil chests with teeth, and they grow legs and arms, and they try to eat you if you open them. In Neo, they don't necessarily do that. If you do go to open one, though, without knowing it's a mimic chest, you will get hurt. But if you're able to tell that it's a mimic chest, and you whistle at it or wave at it using the gestures, it'll actually open up and you won't get hurt. Now, this will end in one of two ways for you. It'll either end with him dancing away or the two of you fighting. So what happens is he'll pop out, he'll do a gesture, and then you'll only have a few seconds to mimic the gesture that he does. And if you take too long to mimic him, he'll get mad and he'll attack you, and then you end up fighting, obviously. So if you respond with the gesture fast enough, he'll dance and then he'll vanish, and you get some loot 
loot and you get a new gesture out of it. But if you end up fighting and you win, you get the loot, but you don't get the gesture. So just like in Dark Souls, even when you're not fighting and just exploring, you still have to be careful of every little step you take. You have to make sure you don't open a mimic chest on accident. You have to make sure that you know what it is. So just be cautious of what chest you're opening. Just keep your eyes peeled and pay a little bit of attention and you should be fine. And up next, number five, we have the loot system. Neo has a really cool loot system. This isn't something that's like brand new for this game. Other games have had this, but it's worth mentioning because for a game like this, this is the right way to handle loot. Just like other games, there are semi-random drops and seeing that you're always working to get stronger and better gear, you could be swapping gear in and out quite a bit. But here it's different. It's not like Destiny where you're constantly changing out your gear as you drop it. One thing Neo does, which is awesome, is it makes it possible to use inferior and older items without being at that much of a disadvantage. The more you use a weapon, the stronger that weapon actually becomes, and you can also take superior weapons and reforge them into your older weapon to bring the stats up. You can also do the same thing with perks. You can re-roll these weapons and get different random perks, so you're not stuck with the same ones on that old weapon for the entire game. So yeah, ne Neo really does seem to have an awesome take on how you go about looting things. Up next, number four, we have XP and Guardian Spirits. There are numerous guardian spirits that you can choose from. And what it is, is it gives your character passive bonuses and it also gives you weapon bonuses when you augment it with your weapon. Like it actually gives you a whole new move set. It gets rid of the high, mid, and low move sets and you just have this one move set. It'll also add elemental damage and increase your damage for as long as you have it activated. Now, as you play the game, you'll gain XP and that will fill up your living weapon bar. And when it's filled, that's when you can activate the weapon augmentation and that's what gives you all the stat bonuses. And just like in Dark Souls, when you die, you'll drop XP and and you'll drop your guardian spirit and you'll have to make it back to that spot without dying to get it all back. If you do happen to die before you get there, you lose all of your XP and your guardian spirit gets lost too until you respawn. It really gives you that risk reward aspect of the game that Dark Souls has and that's one of the things that makes that game so great and so challenging. So like I said before, you really have to watch your back this entire time you're playing the game just to make sure you don't waste all of your time and waste all that XP that you gathered. And up next, number three, we have the combat. So I'm gonna make the comparison again. The combat in Neo is very similar to Dark Souls. But one big difference is the lack of the backstab, which was like the thing to do in Dark Souls. So when you attack an enemy from behind, it would trigger this quick animation of you stabbing the enemy in the back and it would take away a good chunk of their health. Here in Neo, they don't have that. Instead of getting a backstab, you get a damage multiplier for any attacks that are made from behind, which I don't know what'll be more effective, that or the backstab. And I guess depending on what weapon you have and what enemy you're fighting will make it more or less effective I guess and you also have a stamina bar which if you've played Dark Souls you know the hell that stamina bar will put you through so it's super important to keep an eye on it because every attack roll movement hit will deplete that stamina bar and if you run out of stamina you could be fucked not only will you not be able to dodge attacks if you have zero stamina and you're hit by an enemy or if that attack brings you to zero you'll be stunned for a short amount of time and that leaves you open to attacks and this is a great way to die really quick if you aren't careful up next, number two, we have the Ninjutsu and Anmyo archetypes. There's a specialty stat that you'll acquire from playing the game, and you'll be able to spend those points on two different archetypes or classes. Not a class in the sense of like rogue, warrior, knight, not like that, but more of just giving you different skill sets that you can utilize and put into your play style. There's the Ninjutsu skill tree that makes use of tools like smoke bombs, throwing stars, stuff like that. And then there's also the Anmyo that makes use of spells like summoning spells and different kind of buffs for your character and weapons. But the knowing of a skill doesn't necessarily mean that you can use it. You can only have a few skills at once and they have to be readied at a shrine. So before you head out from a shrine, you really have to kind of decide what kind of play style you want to rock for the next few minutes because you can only have certain skills equipped at any given time. And up next, number one, we have the stances. So the past few points have been very combat heavy because as you can see, there is a lot to the combat in Neo. The stances is the final piece of the puzzle. And this makes it really interesting. It's a really interesting aspect of the combat. You have three different stances, high, mid, and low. Each stance has different attack power, how much damage you can block, and how quickly you can dodge attacks. There's the high stance that dishes out more damage than the other two stances, but also has the slowest attacks. So it leaves you open to more attacks from enemies. And dodging in this stance also gives you the most recovery time but blocking takes a hit here. And then there's the mid stance, which seems to be a good mix of all three stances. You'll do moderate damage, you'll have the strongest block, and you'll also have an average dodge with average recovery speed. And finally, there's the low stance, which has the fastest attacks, but deals the least amount of damage. It has good blocking power and has the fastest dodge. I've played both the beta and the alpha, and I must say that the high stance is my pick. But then again, in any game I play, if there's choice between a character with heavier, slower attacks or weaker, faster attacks, I always go with the faster attacks. That's 
just how I like to play my games. And those are 10 things you need to know about Neo. But I want to know what you guys think. Meet me down in the comments. Let me know what you guys think of this game. If there are any other tips or interesting facts that you know about Neo, please put them down there and let me know. And hitting that like button really helps us out. And if you guys didn't already know, we put videos out like this every single day. And the best way to get them is to subscribe to the channel.